I wanted to show you guys the hardware that me and Andy took off the boat. Uh, we spent quite a few days working on these. Had some good bonding time, rather unbonding time. So. <laughs> see what we got here okay so this is the remains of the backing plate for the force day um, yeah it looks pretty bad so I couldn't get it out of the front of the boat it was wedged in there and it uh, it's all bent, you can see, because I was prying on it with a, crow, a crowbar, breaker bar, and it, nothing would get it out. And eventually I had to just cut down to the top of the deck and cut this piece in half, hoping it wasn't uh, glued or fiberglassed in anywhere, I couldn't see. And because the uh, grinder wouldn't fit up in underneath uh, it wouldn't reach. It's just such a tight space with the angles there at the bow of the boat. So luckily I uh, was able to cut down and it fell right out. I hurt the boat a little bit, but uh, it had to be done. Otherwise this would still be in there. So I'm glad it's out. It'll definitely be replaced. It's a Split backstay for the main mast, so picture these on the port and starboard sides. The front uh, will come up and meet to support the main mast. Uh, the rear uh, supports the mizzen mast. Uh, they look like they're in pretty good shape. Uh, hopefully keep using these. Uh, now the backing plates, so what I've seen is that when they originally built the boat in 1972, uh, they just used a backing plate below the deck and this was set on top of the deck like that. And uh, modern design says that's uh, bad. Uh, because it's just supported by the deck and you need some more strength so probably have the backing plates remade and it'll have something like uh, the same part here but then there'll also be a piece coming down like this and then this can then also attach to a bulkhead to give it more strength we've got some lower shroud chain plates all looking pretty good. Might be able to use these backing plates still uh, again with adding another piece like this on it so it also can attaches to a bulkhead. So it'll be like this in the underneath the boat. With this on top like that. something like that <laughs> bolts are all pretty rusted uh, cleats look good so using those again looking pretty nice Let's go look at the uh, rigging here. Uh, the cable looks pretty new. I think the last owner had it uh, cut and replaced uh, and never really, obviously never got a chance to put it on the boat because the mast never went back up. Now the turnbuckles look a lot older. I don't know if they're the original. They certainly look like it. Let's get a better shot here. And they've got some green on them here and there, so that might be 
some oxidation or corrosion or something. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on just cleaning it off and and uh, putting them back in service, but uh, I'll have to ask around and find out how safe they are. Okay, so I want to show you guys the old brochures I have on our boat. This is it over here. <clears throat> uh, I was really glad to, that the last owner had these because I couldn't really find a lot of information on the boat or any pictures of the inside and only a few of the outside. It does have the specs down here which I could find online pretty easily. I think it's a site called um, Sailboat Data, uh, something like that. So the previous owner told me that this was one of the last Morgans made with an 11 foot beam and then they went to something around 13 feet. And uh, it may mean she goes faster in the water, uh, not sure, but we'll find out. That's a shoal draft, so pretty shallow at 4 feet 2 inches. Six feet five inches of headroom, <clears throat> 22,000 pounds displacement. What I learned when I was moving the boat is that the displacement is very close to the actual weight of the boat out of the water, and that includes the keel weight. So the 8,000 pound keel is included in the 22,000 pounds when you're getting the actual weight of the boat. Now it says cast lead for the keel but our keel is it looks like poured concrete with uh, ball bearings mixed in with it. Here's some good shots of the interior. Looks like the galley and the dinette looking towards the front of the boat. And this is uh, looking towards the, I think that's a rear uh, cabin. And this is probably the companionway stairs. <coughs> Shot of the boat on the water. Uh, I like that it has a mizzen stay cell. I'm definitely looking forward to trying that out. Same shot of the interior here. And if you can see the price there, $31,995, which with inflation now would be about a hundred and ninety thousand dollars which is a lot but when you look at the modern production boats they're usually twice that uh, for like a 2017 boat which is interesting and then the uh, most useful bit I was glad, really glad to see uh, that the owner had was the layout, the deck layout. Get a closer look at that. So you have a V berth, pretty standard. Uh, you have two heads in this design, and the reason I think this design is is our boat is because there's two sets of through holes here and here so that makes the most sense now I personally think it's ridiculous to have two heads in any boat under say 50 feet or so why not just have one larger nicer head and share it <laughs> but 
Anyway, uh, you have a relatively small galley along the side here, uh, living space, the other head, and two aft cabins. And then let me show you our new design. Okay, so uh, we took the head out of the front here, so we've got a little more space in the V berth. Uh, this will be standing room with lockers on the side. Uh, this is the bed, uh, shawls on the sides. And I've been allocating about six feet. In, for length for the any place we want people to be able to sleep which is pretty standard I think so each square is a foot so one two three a little over six feet and also with the head gun uh, the dinette can be pushed forward so this is all flush with that bulkhead there'll be a door here this table will lower to make this a berth a couch across from that and then back to the galley here, uh, that's the stove, coming out here is the sink, probably have a refrigerator under that, maybe a freezer as well in this corner, like a box freezer. And I definitely wanted a full size nav station, so that's over here, uh, looking towards the front of the boat, that's the chart table. And. Uh, the scale on that may not be right. Um, uh, we'll see how the layout goes as I build it. Um, I'm definitely going to be altering as I go, and this is a general idea, but it's not exact by any means. Alright, a uh, berth behind it here uh, will be enclosed with bulkheads. And then the door will either open diagonally to the middle or straight out to the center here of this hallway coming out of the companionway stairs. And the head is over here. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to put it in the uh, stern of the boat here is uh, for one, you can really utilize this space uh, behind it under the cockpit. Uh, the only really good use you can get out of it is usually like having a berth uh, like the old design was. Uh, but by having the head back here you can use this space for the holding tank, uh, hot water tank, and any other plumbing you need. Also, uh, having the head here, it kind of focuses all the plumbing in this area. You don't have to run anything up to the front of the boat besides uh, the water tanks coming in. Uh, there'll be a tank in the bow of the boat, about 38 gallons, two tanks in the center, 50 gallons each. So this one will, will run back to these, and then this will... Discharge, there'll be a pump under the deck, under the cabin sole here. So all the fresh water is really just right in this area with the sink for the galley, sink for the head, and the shower. And then, uh, so the head will either open diagonally to the middle or it'll open up into the galley. And the only reason I'd like to do that is it'll give us a little more space by having this corner come straight out and then over. That's it for the layout. My uh, next steps are to start working on replacing the core of the deck. And once I do that, I can uh, put the tow rails back on, get everything watertight, and then start building the interior.